One of the most critical areas of any successful backup implementation is being able to recover what you need when you need it in a timely fashion. Luckily here at Veeam, recovery is something we do exceptionally well. In this video, we're going to explore what options you have available when it comes time to do a full VM recovery, because there are a few different methods. So now let's hop into the lab and explore in the software exactly how to initiate the full VM restore, as well as what functionality exists and how those data flows differ. Now that we're in the software, let's take a quick look at exactly what options you have available when it comes time to restore an entire VM. There's two ways you can activate this restore option. You can either start in the ribbon bar under the restore button, or perhaps a quicker method is to simply browse the backups that you have on disk, expand out the job in question that contains the VM, and then right click on that VM and do restore entire VM. And this takes you to the wizard. Now the first step in the wizard is choosing which restore point you want to recover. By default, this is going to be the latest possible point on disk, but if there was a situation where you needed an earlier point in time, you simply choose point, expand the job, and this will list out all of the other restore points you could leverage. Now the next step in the wizard is where we need to spend a little time. Your first option is restore to the original location. That's simply going to overwrite the source VM. If it still exists, it will get deleted and all the same settings will apply when this recovery is finalized. Now, let's say there was a use case where you need to restore, but perhaps to a new location or with different settings. You do have this ability and notice here on the left, all the other options that became available. You can actually redirect this newly restored VM to an alternate location in production. Or alternatively, one of the newer capabilities that Veeam has introduced is the staged restore. If you actually need to stage it first in the data lab, perhaps due to GDPR compliance or you need to remove data, perhaps apply a patch, you can actually do this restore first inside the data lab, inside this fenced off isolated environment, make your modifications, then migrate it on into production. Now, one of the things that I wanted to point out is the quick rollback checkbox here at the bottom. If you do not enable this feature, and let's just say our example is restoring a VM that failed back to the original location, Veeam is actually going to rehydrate all the data, decompress everything, and restore the full size of the VM back into production while it's down. Right? Keep in mind, this is your traditional restore approach. The VM is down and powered off until this recovery is completed. Now, if we use an example of a five terabyte SQL database, that's going to have to restore five terabytes worth of data into production, redo the VM, and actually finish that recovery before you can power it on. Now in another video, we're going to focus on our instant VM recovery, which will circumvent the downtime associated. But one of the key points to remember is even with instant VM recovery, although the workload can be brought online right away, at some point, you're still going to have to plan for that five terabytes in our example to move from the repository back into production which is gonna cause somewhat of an impact or a consideration within your environment that you need to plan for, such as storage IO and network transfers and things such as this. Now, the reason I bring instant VM recovery up with regards to quick rollback is quick rollback is unique in the fact that this is the only method of doing a full VM restore that can circumvent that full data transfer requirement because the way this capability works is rather than restoring the full five terabytes, Veeam is actually going to look at the delta changes that have occurred from the last point in time that you did a backup or whatever restore point you chose against the current state and only roll back those changes. So in other words, that may only be a fraction of the five terabytes that has to get overwritten back into the source VM before you can then turn it back on. So the scenario here is if you have a little bit of downtime, a little wiggle room to work with, the quick rollback may be even more advantageous than the instant VM recovery because you're only restoring a fraction of the change 
and then there's no migration to complete. You no longer have to worry about the full data size of the VM because all we did was roll back the changes that occurred since that last restore point was taken, right? So very, very small amount of data that has to traverse your network versus the full size, whether it's immediately using the restore to original location in this approach, or perhaps at a later plan time using the instant VM recovery technique. So those are your options when you look at doing a full VM recovery. You can do a secure restore as well if you needed to do a virus scan before you recovered this live in production. This is one of our newer capabilities that we've introduced. And notice with this approach, you also have the ability to denote, are we going to abort the recovery if there is an issue that's discovered in the scan? Or do you want to scan the entire image even if we've detected malware initially? So there's just a few quick options that you can enable should you want to turn on Secure Restore. And the last step in the wizard is simply give this a reason and you're done. So thanks so much for watching this video and enjoy the rest of your day.